How did Isaiah Thomas go from finishing fifth in the MVP voting in 2017 after averaging 28.9 points per game while also leading the Boston Celtics to the Eastern Conference Finals to a man who earned less in his career than Ben Simmons is making this season alone? Short answer, Isaiah Thomas had one of the most rapid drop-offs in NBA history. From MVP type numbers with a max contract in sight to a season so bad that LeBron would have him traded after just 15 games. In just one year, his scoring numbers were cut in half, his field goal percentage dropped to 36.1%, and after he was traded, Isaiah would play in just 96 games in seven years on seven different teams. Demanding the question, what caused one of, if not the biggest, career downfalls we have ever seen? What's up, Mike here, and did you know that since the data was tracked in 1997, Isaiah Thomas is the second best fourth quarter scorer ever a huge statement but if we look at the list 2017 isaiah thomas had the second most fourth quarter points ever out of any player other than kobe bryant as in that 2017 season isaiah averaged a staggering 9.77 points per game in the fourth quarter alone a scoring average that was actually better than kobe's and isaiah seemingly cemented himself as one of if not the game's best closers with his hyper efficient play 2017 isaiah was a legitimate offense of star. As the go-to guy for Boston's offense, he led the Celtics to the number one seed in the Eastern Conference over the Cavs, and he ranked third in points per game, ninth in true shooting percentage, ninth in VORP, seventh in PER, seventh in win shares per 48 minutes, second in offensive win shares, and second in offensive box score plus minus. These numbers were undeniable, and he was just 27 years old. By all accounts, Isaiah was on track to earn a max contract and compared to other guards slash wing all-stars at that time guys who will be in the hall of fame one day isaiah's numbers more than hold their own in this season isaiah was named second team all nba along with steph Giannis, kevin durant and rudy gobert it went into this season never having scored 40 points in a single game he would score 40 or more five separate times in 2017 including a 52 point eruption against the miami heat while also breaking the record for most consecutive 20 point games by a boston celtic with 43 a record that had been held by John Havlicek for 47 years. The Celtics at the time had a defensive base roster that was lacking star power on the offensive end, and Isaiah fit in perfectly. With him on the court, Boston had a 54.8 effective field goal percentage, which would have ranked them second in the entire NBA. And in terms of offensive rating, with IT on the court, the Celtics would have ranked first over the Golden State Warriors with a rating of 116.4. But before we continue, guys, I want to thank Taurus for sponsoring today's video. Video. And I don't know if you saw the recent game between the Nuggets and the Mavericks on March 17th when Kyrie Irving hit his second game winner ever. In that post game interview, Kyrie said, The majority is instinctual and the preparation comes for hours. In this season, there have been tons of impressive performances, but in the spirit of sports, there is a brand that constantly breaks conventions, and that is Taurus. Their products have always impressed me, and they recently sent me their latest personal air conditioner, the Coolify Cyber. The Coolify Cyber provides an instant cooling experience for you. Provides refreshing, cool air from seven directions and is engineered to fit different neck sizes, to move freely, and to use long term. You can use the Coolify Cyber after you play basketball, after you exercise at the gym, after you go hiking, in the car without an air conditioner. As you can see, it's very easy to wear, it's very comfortable, and I think it's something that every sports enthusiast will love. When you put it on, you don't feel any weight and you quickly maintain a comfortable body temperature. Choosing Taurus is choosing a spirit of sports. I highly recommend. In 2024, Taurus also sponsored Sponsored NBA games on World Autism Awareness Day, Coolify can help individuals with autism cope with the discomfort of hot slash cold feeling problems. If you are in need of comfort and air conditioning this season, go pick up a Coolify Cyber from Taurus. Link is on screen or in the description. Go click below. Thank you to Taurus for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. Isaiah wasn't done there as in the 2017 playoffs, he would cement his status as an NBA star, but he would also do so in the wake of a tragedy. In the days leading up to game one against the Chicago Bulls, Isaiah's sister China would pass away in a tragic car accident. Saturday, Thomas's younger sister, 22-year-old China Thomas, she was driving normally, but then slowly drifted to the left before hitting a barrier and then a pole. This was, of course, devastating news and a seemingly impossible situation. Isaiah's teammates in the city of Boston showered him with support and love, but you can only imagine how hard it would be to play a basketball game after the death of your sister. Even Charles Barkley would go out and say this. 
Only in memory of his sister, Isaiah would go out and score 33 points in game one against the Bulls, attend his sister's funeral, be there for his family, and then still lead the Celtics to a first round series win. In the second round, things only got tougher as the media constantly reminded him of his sister's death with tough questions, asking him how he was feeling playing through this pain. But Isaiah's mental toughness really showed. In game one against the Wizards, IT would lose his tooth when elbowed by Otto Porter Jr. However, he would not leave the game, he would respond by leading the Celtics to a comeback game 1 win, and then in game 2, Isaiah went nuclear, as he could not be stopped on the way to a 53 point career high against the Wizards, a game that he would dedicate to his sister. It's our birthday today, and I wanted to play well for her. Which meant after Boston took down the Wizards, Isaiah Thomas' stock was at an all time high. Yes, Boston would lose to the Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals, but at this point, Isaiah believed in Boston. He thought the team Team that had bet on him and the team he had given his soul for would never give up on him, but he was sadly mistaken when Kyrie Irving shocked the NBA with his own announcement. Kyrie Irving requests a trade from the Cavs. What? LeBron James was blindsided what? and is disappointed. Oh, wow. Kyrie Irving doesn't want to be LeBron James' little brother. He doesn't want to be LeBron James' sidekick. Reports would come out that Kyrie had stopped talking to his own teammates during practices before playoff games and that he no longer wanted to be in LeBron's shadow. Kyrie would even go so far as to threaten to get surgery that would force him to miss the 2018 season if the Cavs did not trade him. Cleveland now had to scramble and suddenly Isaiah Thomas found himself without a max contract in Boston and instead he was shipped to the Cavs along with Jay Crowder and a 2018 first round pick that became Colin Sexton. Unfortunately, it is here where the story and reasoning behind Isaiah's downfall becomes very, very murky slash shady. Back in a game in March during the 2017 season, Isaiah suffered a hip injury against the Timberwolves and according to multiple reports, the Celtics told him he could play through it and he would be fine. According to Isaiah, this is what they said. The only thing I think they handled wrong was not explaining to me what the extent of my injury could be if I do play. Mm. At the end of the day, it was a bone bruise. Right. Like, that's what they said. So, if you're gonna tell me it's a bone bruise, I'm playing 10 times out of 10. Right. Isaiah emphasized at his height, he felt he never could sit if he was healthy enough to play, and so he played. However, this injury would become so bad that Isaiah was forced to miss the final three games of the Eastern Conference Finals, and after he was traded, he would say this about Celtics general manager Danny Ainge. Quote, I might not ever talk to Danny again. That might not happen. I will talk to everybody else, but what he did, knowing everything that I went through, you don't do that, bro. The Cavaliers themselves thought Isaiah Thomas was medically cleared. They, of course, would not have traded Kyrie Irving and bet LeBron's final season with the team on Isaiah Thomas if they thought that his hip was so bad that it was going to need surgery. Unfortunately, though, that is what would happen. Isaiah would get surgery in the future, but first we had a nightmare of a Cleveland Cavaliers season. Now we need to remember at this point in time exactly where Isaiah came from to get here. As one of the shortest players in league history, throughout his entire life, Isaiah was discounted on a basketball court and needed to prove himself. He was just a three-star recruit in high school, but became an NBA player. He was the 60th pick of the 2011 draft, but in his rookie season would already prove almost every team that passed on him wrong as he ended up starting over a lottery pick, Jimmer Fredette. His third season in Sacramento, he would average over 20 points points per game and six assists per game, but the Kings would give up on him, sending him to the Suns, who also gave up on him, as the Suns moved him after only 46 games for Marcus Thornton, who would average 3.6 points per game in Phoenix, and a top 10 protected pick that ended up becoming the 28th pick in Scal Labassier, a man who was out of the league in four years. So even while Isaiah continued to prove himself on the court to everyone, no team believed in Isaiah until the Boston Celtics, and then the Celtics blindsided him after he suffered through both a personal injury and a personal tragedy. So now filling in Kyrie Irving's shoes with the Cavaliers next to LeBron James, Isaiah felt the pressure to go out and play and perform no matter how his hip was feeling. Tracy McGrady though would actually warn Isaiah on TV about trying to play through this injury. Isaiah's not a young spring chicken no more. He's up there in age. He's got a lot of miles on his body. I mean, I, I remember I had surgery on my knee and I thought it was just going to be something small right. right 
but it completely changed who I was as a player. Unfortunately though, after sitting the first 36 games to begin this season, Isaiah would go out and try to play and the results were disastrous. In just 15 games in Cleveland, Isaiah would average 14.7 points per game on 37.3% shooting as the Cavs, who would finish 50 and 32, would go just seven and eight in the 15 games Isaiah played in. Isaiah was trying to be the same player he was last season. His usage percentage was 28.9 in Cleveland, a very comparable to LeBron's 31.6. Isaiah though was just not the same player and him and LeBron did not get along in any way, which meant Isaiah was traded to the Lakers where the doubts only continued to grow. Nobody's gonna give Isaiah Thomas a super max. Isaiah right now is fighting for mid-level exception, five teams in seven years. However, even after averaging 20 points per game for the Lakers, Isaiah still was not close to the same player he was as he shot just 38% and the Lakers were a losing team with him. And finally, Isaiah would get the hip surgery he needed. However, this caused him to fall from a max level player to signing just a one year, $2 million deal with the Denver Nuggets. This was supposed to be just a short term bump in the road. Unfortunately, Isaiah would play in just 12 games in Denver and shot just 34.3% from the field as his quickness was gone. And while Isaiah would end up getting chances on the Pelicans, Lakers again, Mavericks, Hornets, and now the Suns, his best chance at redemption and a meaningful big contract was with the Wizards in 2020. That season though, we saw how much the injuries had caused him to fall. In Washington, Isaiah played in 40 games and started 37 of them, but his ultimate problem reared its ugly head. As while IT's offensive numbers were at a near superstar level at the highest of levels, his defensive numbers, even in 2017, were just honestly awful. As evidenced by the fact that while he was on the court with the Celtics, Boston had a defensive rating of 112, which would have ranked the Celtics tied for fourth worst in the NBA, while when Isaiah was off the court, Boston had a defensive rating of 102.3, which would have ranked them first in the entire NBA ahead of the Spurs. With the Cavs in 2018, nothing was working, as on the court for the Cavs, Isaiah led them to an offensive rating of 106 and a defensive rating of 122.2, which would have been good for 24th in the league in offensive rating and dead last in the league in defensive rating behind the Suns. Even worse, this defensive rating was so bad that this 9.4 difference in margin between Isaiah Thomas's on-court play and the Suns defensive rating was a larger margin than the Suns had with the Boston Celtics and the Celtics had the best defense in the entire league. So when he was in his absolute prime as an offensive star, or when he was coming off the bench as a sixth man, Isaiah Thomas's offense did make up for his lack of defense, and he was certainly an incredibly valuable piece. Unfortunately though, these hip injuries just cost him, and Tracy McGrady's words ended up being prophetic. His mobility was gone, his quickness was gone, and at his height, Isaiah would never regain the same form. Isaiah never had a single season with a positive number in defensive box score plus minus, and by that 2020 season with the Washington Wizards, Isaiah would rank last in the entire NBA in defensive rating among players who played in at least 10 games. I'm running back and a fan has both of his middle fingers up and his response was, I'm sorry, I just wanted a frosty because if you miss two free throws, I guess the fans get a frosty. The question is, can we blame Isaiah for this? Isaiah fought through injuries and was told by the Boston Celtics he would be fine if he played through injury. If Isaiah's words are true there, I think we can all agree that is one of the most messed up things that can possibly happen to an NBA player. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications to see more videos like this. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it. Here are two videos that are like this one that I think you're really going to enjoy. And as always, I hope you have an awesome day. Peace.